What's up guys, today we're going to be going over my all-time favorite Destiny Exotic, Touch of Malice, which was my go-to weapon in D1 for basically everything, even speedruns and challenges. This thing was an absolute monster, and when it came out in D2, it was good, but never great. But there's a lot of changes this season to this weapon that I think make it great now and definitely worth using. So starting off, they increased the final round damage in PV by 20%. So jumping straight into damage of this weapon, it normally hits for 3.8,000. Then with the final round, it will go up to 8.3k. And finally, if you ready the Blight, increases damage to 12.5,000 for roughly 4 seconds. So recapping those numbers, the final round is now a 120% increase. Then under the 4 seconds of the Blight, it's going to be a 50% increase further on top of that. And look at the DPS of this weapon versus Majors, Champions, Bosses, Mini Bosses, things like that. 20 shots took 4.4 seconds, which means the DPS of the final round will be 37.6. And for the Blight, the 4 seconds will be 56.5. And those numbers aren't bad for a primary and kind of in there with specials for the Blight damage, but to really take advantage of the Blight DPS number, you need a full fire team doing this, and these numbers are not close to some of the top options in the game, so don't use this as your main DPS. It is a decent backup choice, like once you run out of ammo or something like that. But where this thing excels is its damage versus red bars. It hits for 18.8 thousand per bullet with final round, which means the DPS of the final round shot is almost 85 thousand, and with the Blight, it would be up to 127,000 versus minor enemies in this game, which is actually absurd. Comparing that to a 120 RPM hand cannon with the highest damage buff in the game, 50%, the Touch of Malice isn't that far behind in terms of single bullet damage, but shoots well over twice as fast. But there is a downside to having this much damage coming out of your primary, and that is the self damage, which was reduced by 30%. The final round can no longer kill you, and they increase the health awarded by the Touch of Malice perk from 30 to 75, and set up Touch of Malice to work like Unrelenting, where higher tier enemies count towards more points towards activation. So now you'll do way less damage to yourself with the final round, making it a lot harder to make yourself low, and you can no longer actually die from the damage of the final round. It'll just keep you at low health the entire time. And on top of that, the way the health works is not only more health back from every three rapid kills, it's not even really required to be that rapid anymore. The time between kills can be quite large, and the health back is like a good third of your health instantly, which is really good. If you think about it from a number standpoint, each bullet does seven damage to you, and in most content, if you're careful, it only takes three bullets to get three kills, which means over those three bullets, you'll get minus 21, but you'll get 75 back from the healing. And also what's really cool about this is anything that is considered a major or higher counts as all three to proc the healing. So when you get a final blow on a major or anything like that, you get the health. And the result of all these changes makes it so you'll find yourself not really dying with Touch of Malice nearly as often as you used to. It still doesn't hurt to run a healing option on top of it, for example, Banner War on Titan. As we uploaded the video about this build yesterday, throwing this on on top of that, all you have to do is start the chain with a melee kill. Then just use the touch of malice which will easily one hit almost like every red burn in the game in the head every third kill you'll get the health back along with the passive healing of banner war you will have no issue staying alive with this combo at all another combo you can run is with your favorite devourer build on warlock with the controverse hold throw my vortex grenade proc devourer and then obviously every single final blow will not only want to get the health back from Touch Malice, but all my health back from Devour, making it basically impossible to die with this combo. And then finally, what you could do is also pair it with your favorite Restoration Times 2 build, whether that be throwing hammers on Titan or some Bridgers on Warlock. All three of these options, Banner of War, Devour, and Restoration would be really good options to keep you alive with Touch of Malice. And finally, the last part of the rework is the Ball of Darkness now appropriately deals arc damage and will blind combatants and stun unstoppable champions. So look at that. The blind part is, um, I'm not sure if it's bugged, but it really doesn't blind that well at all unless I'm just misunderstanding how it works. It seems to only blind like what it actually hits if it lives or like the things like right next to it but it doesn't seem to blind any huge radius at all. So I'm not sure if that is bugged or what. I've also seen some other issues with the blight shot in terms of the stopping champions. So maybe they could work on the coding a little bit there down the road and hopefully there'll be an update to that. And with the blight stopping champions, since that is now built into the weapon, it makes the touch of mouse not work with any artifact champion mods. 
even unstoppable, which it is the season. As you see, no matter how long I ADS with a scout, it just doesn't ready the unstoppable shot. But the blight will stop them when it works. And you could use the touch of malice as like your main way to kill the champion. As we showed off the DPS with the blight isn't that bad, but it's not necessarily great. So you could do this, but I would recommend using touch of malice like a primary like it is. And when you use this weapon like a primary versus majors and minors, this scene absolutely slaps. On the Banner War Titan build with all the different melee options we have that I can still use for the champions, then using the Touch of Malice for all the red bars. In this Lost Sector, yet another one I don't traditionally like to run. And with this build, I was just walking right through it, no problem at all, doing low two minute runs every single time. Like it was nothing. So overall, the Touch of Malice as a primary is just completely unmatched right now in terms of roll damage output versus minor enemies. And in most content you'll play in the game, you'll be just be deleting them left and right. But where I think this thing would really shine is in the hardest content in the game, like GMs, where you're well under light. And you can definitely take advantage of that crazy damage per shot with the final round. The one downside would be staying alive. But with all the updates this weapon got this season in terms of helping you stay alive and give you more health back, Pairing that with Banner War, Devour, or something like that. Even in a GM, I think this thing would crank out and just delete red bars, and you would not have to worry about staying alive at all. And pairing it with the Banner of War Titan build, where you still have all kinds of great options for champions with your grapple melee or your powered melees. And then for the boss fight, you would still have your super. So overall, this is a well rounded build that I think would excel really well in GM style content. And I'm looking forward to trying it out when they come out. So if you haven't tried Touch of Malice since the update, definitely give it a try. It's one of the hardest hitting primaries of all time. It's much easier to stay alive overall, and in the right build, it becomes an absolute monster. Like usual, links for watching. Catch you guys next time.